We now think have killed about 14 to 15 million people, mostly across this region of South and, S and East Asia since the 1950s and 1960s, which put pesticides into everybody's houses across Asia, including Nepal. This now, the numbers have come down now. Probably about 150,000 people are dying every year, probably about 1,000 people every year in Nepal because they drink pesticides at moments of stress because pesticides are so easily available here. So the simplest answer to that is to ban the most highly hazardous pesticides. There's clear data from Sri Lanka, from Bangladesh, from South Korea, that when you ban just a few particular pesticides, which people are commonly using for self-harm and for suicide, the suicide rate overall falls really rapidly and really remarkably. If you're careful how you do it and which pesticides you choose, you manage to get, get rid of the deaths, but without affecting agricultural output. And so, um, for example, in Sri Lanka, they banned uh, monocrotophos and metamidophos in 1995. And over the next 20 years, there was a 70% reduction in all suicides, saving around 93,000 lives at a cost of $50 per life saved. These are remarkable numbers, and really one of the most effective public health interventions anywhere in the world. So while Sri Lanka's really had a great success, there have been successes elsewhere. China was, because of its size and because of its huge agricultural population, the epicenter for many years. Expect, we thought about 180,000 deaths every year in the late 1990s. That's down to 50,000 per year. Still a huge number, it still needs to come lower, but that's a remarkable reduction. Mostly due to leave, people leaving the rural areas and the mechanization of agriculture, but also due to their bans of a certain number of pesticides. There's, the number of pesticide suicides in Nepal is relatively small compared to the whole pesticides and that's probably due to the number of bans which the government's done here over the last 15 years. Metacid or methyl parathion was a huge problem here in the 1990s and early 2000s until it was banned and now there are no cases of suicide with that. Um, it's been replaced more recently by dichlorvos and that was banned by the government in the last few months. So that'll be out of the shops within a couple of years. So there's really remarkable changes going on here in Nepal to really remove these most toxic pesticides, leaving us with less toxic pesticides. If someone takes a pesticide now and survives it, they have much more chance of going back to their family, back to their community, seeing mental health psychiatrists to try to help them get through this crisis, and relatively few will go on to kill themselves. So getting rid of these pesticides is an overall benefit. Here in Nepal, we're now trying to build on the work that's been done over these years and trying to identify now what's going on, which pesticides are killing people. So we work with people from the, uh, teaching, unit, the teaching hospital, the, the TUTH. We work with the Nepal Public Health Foundation. And with the work going to hospitals, working with the police and the National Forensic Toxicology Laboratories, we realize that the two key pesticides are dichlorvos, which has now been banned, and also aluminium phosphide which is available as a small tablet, which is so easy to, to swallow at moments of stress and anger without much thought. And I guess the, the last compound we're now identifying is a chlorpyrifos cypermethrin combination, which has come in over the last several years in India and here. And that combination as well seems really quite toxic. So hopefully we'll get more and more data with that and take that information to the agriculture department and see how they want to move with that.